Hello guys and welcome back to Engineering Hack, where we try to solve engineering problems in a way that's hopefully easy to understand. We are in the quest of solving the final exam of heat and mass transfer for 2020. So far we already took down the first question, which was worth four marks on shape factor and the net radiation uh, transfer. Uh, and that's what we've done here, so that's in the previous video. Now we're jumping to question number two, which is around mass transfer. Problem statement reads, in a vertical falling film evaporator in the dairy industry, air at 40 degrees Celsius and 200 kilopascals flows through a wetted wall column of 200 millimeters in diameter at a velocity of 2 meters per second. The molar weight of air is 29 grams per mole. What is the mass transfer coefficient for the humidification of this air stream by evaporation from the wet walls if the diffusion coefficient is 1.2 times 10 to the minus 5 meters squared per second? Okay, this is worth 6 marks, is around mass transfer. We don't have, um, we have to highlight a couple of things, so we definitely want to highlight the pressure. So the pressure is not one atmosphere, and because the pressure is not, not one atmosphere, that means that we will need to account for the difference in density, right? So the density, we know density is a function of our pressure. And I'm going to be using also the dynamic viscosity. I know that, and I know the dynamic viscosity is not a function of pressure. So that means that I need to, you know, pay attention for to this because my density will change accordingly. What else? Um, they're giving us the diffusion ratio for this situation here. Um, so that's the D, right? This is the D, D uh, coefficients. Um, and we're being asked what is the mass transfer coefficient, mass transfer coefficient, and this guy is the K, right, not to be confused with the K for conductivity. So this is the K that arises from, you know, the mass flow rate that I have, mass transfer that I have, is the K, that is the mass transfer coefficient, times the area, times the difference in concentration, right, analogous to Hugh, uh, Newton's law of cooling, right, so this is what I'm after. To be able to find that, I can relate that, you know, I know I can relate the mass transfer coefficient to Sherwood's number. So the game plan here is, let, right, to find K, I need Sherwood. To find Sherwood, I'm going to need the relationship, and Sherwood is, really, um, is related to Reynolds, and also to, what's the other number that's related to? The Schmitt's number, Schmitt's number. So we need all these three non-dimensional numbers to be able, these two to calculate this guy, and this guy to calculate this guy. So that's the game plan. Find Reynolds, find Schmidt to be able to find Sherwood. If Sherwood find the K, okay. So I'm going to go. We don't need this, but I have the you know formulas that you were provided in the exam. So let's use this to our advantage. Um, this is the equation we were talking about before. So the diffusivity relationship with diffusivity. You know, the the C the concentration dx. This is fixed law of diffusion. Um, the diffusivity is the D that was given to us, the diffusion coefficient. Schmidt's number, that's one of the things we need to find. So that's defined as either uh, the kinematic viscosity by the uh, diffusivity or the dynamic viscosity by the density by diffusivity. Um, oh, it's actually explained here. Brilliant. Um, what else? Sherwood's number. Sherwood's number is given here, so that's, what, that's where the K shows up. Here is the K we're looking for. And mass transfer. So this is the equation we're going to be using to find k. Um, and there's a relation. There, there are two relationships here for Sherwood. Two relationship. One for laminar flow in pipes, which is not our case, and one for evaporators with walls and uh, you know, turbulent scenario. So this is exactly what we're looking for. This there's and that's it. Okay, for the mass transfer part. So this is exactly the relationship we're going to be using to be able to find Sherwood. And as you can see, we're going to need Reynolds and Schmidt for that. Um, Turbulent is considered if Reynolds is above 4,000, so this requires turbulent flow, so we need Reynolds to be above 4,000 to be able to use it. So we need to check that as we're doing it. All right, so that's what we need. And then here are the properties of air. This is also given in the exam. And we have air, what, and let's just draw the problem quickly. So we have, let me draw my, <coughs> my wetted wall. It has a diameter of 100 centimeters, so this is going to be 100 times 10 to the minus 3 meters, this is my diameter, for diameter. Uh, not to be confused with the D for diffusivity, that's why I put the coefficient in the bottom there. We have wetted walls, so we have water on the sides of this tube, of this, you know, of this wall. Um, we have air, air is coming through this guy here, air. 
and air has a set of properties that were given to us and we know that air is coming in at 40 so t infinity of air is 40 celsius we know the um, pressure is 200 kilopascals and we know that the velocity is 2 meters per second brilliant we're also given the ma uh, molecular weight of air and just put it like so and that's 29 or we do 29 times 10 to the minus 3 kilograms per mole What's the idea? Well, air is coming in with little to no water, and because there's a different concentration between the wet and the wall, so the part in which there's the water and the part in which there's the only air, we should observe some of that water going into that part of the air, and that's going to be our mass transfer right there. Okay. What we need to do is we need to find Reynolds. To be able to find Reynolds, we need to multiply the velocity times the density, divide all of everything by diffusivity and the characteristic length. In this case, it's not the length of the pipe; it's the diameter, right? So the diameter here we have diameter we have velocity we need to find the dynamic viscosity from the table from this table here and we also need to find the um, uh, specific weight or density depending on how you learn this all right so let's start with the first finding the things we need for our bulk temperature what's the bulk temperature that we have in this case so we have the 40 celsius which is equivalent to 200 uh, 313 sum of 230, 233 to 313 Kelvin. So that's what we're aiming for. We have values for 300 and 250. So I want to grab my density between these two values. I want to grab my dynamic viscosity between these two values. So let me just quickly do something like this. My temperature at 300, 350, and 313, which is what I'm looking for. I'm going to have my density here. It's going to be 1.1774. We need 0.998. Here, my viscosity is 1.8462. And over here, it's 2.075, all times 10 to the minus 5. What do you see here? Top corner there. Um, so now we can interpolate, do a linear interpolation to you know, these values here. Um, what I got was 1. 1308 and here I got 1.906 times 10 to the minus 5. This is probably one of the best places to go wrong because this is the you know the specific uh, weight that yeah, or specific weight of air at 40 Celsius at one atmosphere, right? So this is for one atmosphere, and actually this table actually tells you that these guys, so this guy, this guy, this guy, and this guy are not pressure dependent. All the other ones are, right? So in other words, this guy is pressure dependent, and this guy is pressure dependent. Uh, so that, and this guy is pressure dependent. So that means that we need to account for that. And this is a good place for students to go wrong because they forget about that. So we need to account for that. There's two ways we can account for that. We can say that our new density, so density uh, for actual, I guess, actual, actual, is just the density that we have at one atmosphere, ATM, divided by the ratio between the two atmospheres so the, the pressure that we have and the pressure of one atmosphere that's one way to do it the other way is to actually because air is approximately an ideal gas we can say air equals mrt this being the number of moles and then we can say oh if i just want you know number of moles divided by my volume i just need to do rt divided by my pressure right so this is number of moles per volume uh did i flip this i flip this pressure divided by rt okay and then additionally because we know this fella here which just looking at the units is mass divided by the number of moles. I can you know, flip this and I can say, okay, so the number of moles is just the mass divided by the molecular weight. So over here, that means that this is mass divided by the molecular weight, volume, volume, pressure, RT. And therefore, if I want mass per volume, which is what we're looking for, uh, we just need to do pressure times the molecular weight divided by R and T. We have all that, so thankfully we can figure this out quickly. Either way, I mean, this might probably it's probably easier, right? So, uh, actual equals uh, what's the what's the one atmosphere one? It's one point thirteen, and then if you want two hundred kilopascals, I mean, I mean two hundred times ten to the three pascals, and one atmosphere is one hundred one point uh, three hundred twenty five times ten to the so this is Pascal's Pascal's go away. Just keep the units here. Um, two 
2.226 that is kilograms per meters cubed same as the 130 all right so all that to be able to find density that was you know specific weight that's that was a you know a lot of work for that but now that we have that we can calculate Reynolds because if you recall that's what we were missing for Reynolds the other thing we were missing was this fellow that I already got so we can go ahead and do Reynolds my Reynolds will be my or what's my velocity two meters per second so two meters per second times the density 2.226 times characteristic length diameter um, 100 and so it's 0 0.1 point 0.1 meters and my viscosity is 1.906 times 10 to the minus 1 which gives me a rate notes of 23659.9 if you recall we actually had a reference for the rate notes where is it so it had to be more than 4000 and indeed it is so that's turbulence and so we can use our relationship the only one that we're, that we're, we're given okay to be able to use a relationship we also need to find schmidt's number schmidt's number also need Schmidt's number and Schmidt's number is related to the mass strength of coefficient um, you can find it with sorry the, diffus the diff diffusion coefficient I always accept those so the viscosity the density and the diffusion coefficients okay so I always do the co here because you know this can be easily confused with diameter um, we have these values so this is 1.906 times the minus 5 this is 2.226 and this here was given and I forgot it already it was given in the problem statement somewhere one point two times ten to the minus five one point two times ten to the minus five okay so these guys these guys go away so Schmidt's number for this case is point seven thirteen Okay, dimensionless once again. Um, so we got this fellow too, all good. And now we can do Sherwood. Sherwood will be just the relationship that we saw before, the one that I painted in bloom, this one here. So Sherwood is going to be 0 0.023 times Reynolds to the 0.83 times Schmidt to the 0.44. The empirical correlations for Sherwood's number. So 0.23 um, Reynolds. Time Schmitz. Point forty four and point eighty three. This gave me eighty three seventy six. Again, right, well, no dimensions here. And now this is the last part, I guess, which we're looking for. If you recall, the whole thing was to find. K, right? And K is related to Sherwood. That was the whole drama. And this is characteristic length over the diffusivity. Okay, this guy, again, this is diameter in our case. So that will be, if I want to find K, I just need to do my 8376 times the this guy, which is 1.2 times 10 to the minus 6. Um, 10 to the minus 5, sorry, minus 5, minus 5. And our characteristic length, which is our diameter, which is 0 0.1, 0 0.1 meters. So k is 0 0.01, 0 0.01, and units for k are the same for velocity and dispersed. So this is our answer for part two. Okay, so the, I guess the the hardest thing was you know finding first properties there. Probably the best place to go wrong is forgetting to do either this or this to be able to solve for the density or perhaps forgetting to do you know writing the properties the correct properties at your uh, t infinity of 40 celsius other than that if you have any questions just leave them down below as per usual if this helped you out consider liking the video and we'll talk soon